Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. Uh, the books that I will be hauling actually come from a care package from uh, a bookstore owner and someone who's become a good friend of mine, uh, Ian Pete from Barrier Island Books and Art. Our paths first crossed when I paid a visit to Barrier Island Books and Art back in the summer of 2019. However, uh, Pete was not at the store at the time. However, when he saw that I did a haul of the books that I got from his store, and during the uh, circumstances that were 2020, he started engaging in activity on, on his YouTube channel. And uh, he liked the format that I was utilizing during the spring of 2020 to uh, release new content. And he a dis he, he had said that he had wanted to send me a care package, which was very uh, thoughtful of him, and I'm greatly appreciative of his thinking of me, and I wanted to show you what he got for me. Uh, I was originally going to do an unboxing, but uh, the condition in which the box came in uh, was not as great as it could have been, and we wanted to open it up uh, right away, so... Uh, the quality of the books and uh, not seeing them get damaged is the most important part. Uh, but let's get started. The first thing that I got in the package is Reading Lolita in Tehran, uh, a memoir in books by Azar Nafisi. And uh, I do have a, a copy of this. I have a copy of a few of these, but I do like to have uh, more than one copy of books here and there, uh, because there's so much that you can do with multiple uh, copies of books where you can lend them out without being as concerned. Uh, you can, for someone like myself, if we're doing a discussion and someone needs to get a hold of the book, but they are having difficulty finding it, or they are having a bit of a challenge uh, being able to acquire it for whatever reason. I can always lend them an additional copy and all would be good, especially if it comes to something that I really want to go over, but uh, it's not very uh, active in print. Uh, but I really like the nature of this. This caught my attention when I first came across it. So this gives me more reason to want to examine it even further. Here is the collected shorter plays of Samuel Beckett. Uh, Pete did a really good job uh, keeping an eye on things that uh, I might be interested in uh, because I really enjoy plays and uh, in particular I like absurdist plays and Samuel Beckett is one of the most renowned in that particular subgenre within the play uh, format. This one was quite a gem. I really like these uh, classic modern library anthologies and uh, here is an anthology of famous British stories edited by Bennett Cerf and Henry C. Moriarty. Uh, I have something uh, of this nature that is the uh, uh, bedside stories of British stories. And uh, while they are both uh, similar, uh, this, came out, this came out a little bit later and... Uh, I think that the uh, the contributions that Bennett Cerf has brought into uh, literature in America and putting forth what he felt was top of the line was just uh, amazing to the point that it is envious. Uh, but something that was interesting I saw was... The Merry Christmas 1968, uh, Betty and Bennett, 
which for a moment I thought that Bennett Cerf may have gifted this, but uh, Bennett Cerf, uh, it turns out his wife's name, I should have I should have known with the amount of What's My Line that I was watching, uh, I needed a bit of a refresher that uh, his wife's name was Phyllis. Uh, but there are probably other Bennetts around in the area, and he was still alive in 1968. Uh, but uh, I did know that his kids were uh, Christopher and Jonathan. Uh, Christopher Surf was... Uh, a uh, music producer, and he had a huge role in uh, on Sesame Street behind the scenes, and he also created Between the Lions too. Uh, but this is definitely something that's uh, a valuable asset to my book collection, especially if there are things in here that I would like to encourage people to read. If we ever go over a short story on our channel, and they'll have the resource. This is the book that uh, started this whole care package uh, because uh, Pete and I were talking about James Monroe, A Life, uh, the Tim McGrath biography. Uh, Pete and Tim McGrath are uh, good friends, so it was uh, quite something that he uh, put that together, but... Here's a biography of General George Washington, Military Life, uh, by Edward G. Lengel. And he is a, a relative of uh, Pete Lengel's, uh, where he, uh, and uh, this Lengel is a, uh, a history instructor at the University of Virginia, which is quite remarkable. Uh, he even makes mention to it on the uh, in the flap where the price is that uh, author's relative is the st is this store's owner which I'm really intrigued to read this because this is I once you read uh, once you have enough biographies on particular figures uh, there are the more commonly known presidents are going to warrant more biographies, but then you got to take it to the next level, and then there's areas that you can concentrate on, and that would incorporate any president. But the uh, this concentrates on his uh, military service, which is something that's definitely worth exploring because it really sets up the foundation of the George Washington legacy. I also got six great modern short novels, which is quite an intriguing collection of uh, uh, short not which, uh, come to think of it, uh, we just did a taping of a Herman Melville poem, and I made mention of the fact that Billy Budd was his last, uh, it was his last novel, and his, la his first work of prose for 30 in 30 years because for a period of time he was only writing poetry uh, but I don't have or I don't have I don't own Moby Dick uh, but now I own Billy Budd and I have works of his scattered in various collections uh, he might be someone I would like to get into, especially since I think his approach on uh, literature and war took on a more honest tone compared to figures like Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and Walt Whitman, who were a bit more glorifying to uh, the Civil War efforts, whereas Herman Melville was uh, reminding people that this is a war and uh, innocent people are being killed. But I had I have a collection of Catherine Ann Porter's 
short stories, but having Noon Wine is quite a nice addition. Uh, and uh, The Pilgrim Hawk uh, is something that I would be uh, inclined to check out. This is quite a nice addition. It combines local history, uh, World War II history, uh, marine history, uh, and it looks like it's a very intriguing adventure piece in Shadow Divers. The true adventure of two Americans who risked everything to solve one of the last mysteries of World War II by Robert Curson. I think that uh, Jesse would definitely uh, find some intrigue in this if we ever uh, propose that we go over this work. Here is the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime by Mark Haddon in hardcover. Uh, I read this back in 2017 and it was not a favorite of mine. However, uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, Pete's thought for uh, sending me this because this is probably the most renowned uh, uh, book of fiction uh, with the topic of uh, that pertains to somebody who has Asperger syndrome, and I think that that's very meaningful. Here is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. Uh, this has to do with the uh, life of uh, Louis Zamperini. And I had read through this for uh, a World War II film and literature class, but now I can read this in a more uh, casual environment during a more casual time instead of one that's more academic, per se. Here is In the Heart of the Sea, the tragedy of the whale ship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrick. And uh, Philbrick's works, uh, Philbrick's books are definitely uh, something that I would like to incorporate as well. I hope that he uh, keeps writing because he uh, his writing in itself is very intriguing. Here is The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, uh, which we discussed on our channel for Season 10. It was uh, one of the earlier episodes during the season. Uh, I thought it was an okay book, uh, but I personally am into his shorter works, but I would like to read more of his uh, standard novels as well, because some of them have a sense of intrigue for me. And on the topic of that, uh, here is a fictional memoir uh, by Ernest Hemingway called True at First Light. And this really uh, explores and dips upon the border of what it is to have, uh, what, it, what it means to be uh, a memoir as well as a work of fiction where there are things that actually happened in here but uh, there are also moments that uh, Hemingway uh, things in here uh, Hemingway fictionalized probably to make it more of uh, an appealing work but at the same time capture what it was that was real. Here is a collection of the best plays by Chekhov. And these definitely have his uh, noteworthy works in here. Uh, the Cherry Orchard is probably the, his most renowned play. Uh, but 
The other three in here, the Seagull, Uncle Vanya, and the three sisters also have their own uh, renown. And uh, these were translated into English by Stark Young. That is one thing that uh, Bar Barrier Island Books and Art has a great collection of uh, modern library classics. Here is a heartbreaking work of staggering genius by Dave Eggers. Uh, there isn't much of a summary on here. However, it does touch upon uh, the... Uh, intuitive and uh, a sense of uh, psychological uh, being psychologically uh, inept within society and I, I would be inclined to see what uh, kind of book this uh, this is because this is a Pulitzer Prize finalist as well as Eggers debut as far as I know and finally I got guns germs and steel the fates of human society by Jared Diamond and this is an interesting meld of uh, history and science which is something that has intrigued me uh, there's so much to explore in that area, and I would like to learn more. I think this is a great starting point, too. Alrighty. Those are the books that uh, Pete very kindly uh, sent to me uh, as part of his care package, and I really greatly appreciate them. Uh, all of these books are going to be going to great use, and I would like to get to them uh, as soon as I am able to. Uh, and as soon as things get relatively decent, I would like to, by all means, pay a visit to Barrier Island Books and Art in person. Uh, I would like to uh, pay visits to uh, many of my favorites, and uh, Barrier Island Books and Art is definitely uh, primed to become one of them. Uh, and just Stone Harbor in general is just a beautiful place. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel. And uh, before I sign off, just uh, um, an absolute thank you to Pete from Barrier Island Books and Art. And if you are in the Stone Harbor area, his, play, his bookstore is definitely worth checking out. Uh, if you uh, are familiar with or are ever going to or plan to go to the Cape May Zoo, uh, Barrier Island Books and Art is not too far away. Uh, you just hop right back on the parkway. It's an exit down. It's, yeah, an exit down. And then you just keep going east. Thank you, and for now, keep reading.